In the recent Halo Infinite development update with the Sandbox team, they go over in specific details about vehicles and how they'll play in Halo Infinite. Their design philosophies, where they started with the design of vehicles, and some favorite vehicles coming back at the Halo Infinite with some new ones as well with an interesting crossover. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like this kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the video here. So if you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a while, you've probably noticed that there was a massive sandbox update for Halo Infinite from 343. A detailed high level update with the sandbox team kind of going over all the weapons, vehicles, equipment, and just their philosophy behind the design of Halo Infinite. We did a nice little overall video. And then last video, we did a deep dive into the weapons coming into Halo Infinite. You guys seem to like that one. So now we're doing a deep dive into the vehicles for the game. So first off, we'll talk about their design philosophy, how they actually kind of started with the environment when it came to designing the vehicles. Their emphasis on teamwork when it came to vehicles, as well as the return of a fan favorite vehicle that's been lost for Halo for way too long, as well as some new hybrid vehicles coming in as well. Let's get right into the content here. But before going into the specifics of today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor that is Loot Crate. They recently sent me out some apparel of some Fallout themed t-shirts and they fit great, they look great, and they're just pretty cool. I'm a big fan of Fallout, so it's pretty awesome to get this kind of stuff. You probably remember Loot Crate, it's just like that box you get every once in a while, but they're branching out to much more than just kind of little trinkets of things here and there. If you check out the link in the description down below, it will take you right to their website, which gives you my affiliate link. And if you pick up anything on that website, I get a little kickback so it helps support the channel. Cool things like Doom, Destiny, Fallout, and a whole bunch of other fandoms as well. This works well for a gift or just something fun to have for yourself. Again, check out the link in the description down below, get you a little bit of a discount, as well as a kickback on the channel as well to help support it out. So thank you so much Loot Crate for sponsoring this video. So in this first section, we're going to talk about their design philosophy when it came to creating and bringing vehicles from classic Halo into Halo Infinite, as well as making some new ones and how their philosophy of where they started with the design of these vehicles, how they interact with weapons, and how they interact with the world itself of Zeta Halo. One big takeaway I got from this whole entire section was they put a big emphasis on teamwork vehicles. And what I mean by teamwork vehicles is something, think of like the Warhog, right? You got a driver and you got a guy who guns. Those are the two positions. That's teamwork needed for a vehicle to work well. In Halo 5, it was a big criticism that a lot of the vehicles that were added into the game were very much like solo vehicles, like the Phaeton, the Wasp as well, where you didn't really need anybody else in your vehicle to make it more effective, you're kind of just effective on your own. And while Halo definitely does need those kind of vehicles, having teamwork vehicles added into Halo makes the gameplay so much more dynamic, fun, and interesting. And they mention it specifically two times within this update for the small section of the vehicles. Bandbox team lead Quinn Del Hoyo said, Vehicles are very important to Halo. I always remember jumping in a Warhog for the first time playing co-op Halo CE with my friend. It was the first time I felt like a video game brought to life playing with action figures as a young boy. Vehicles, much like weapons, have an assortment of roles that we want to be represented. Brian Berryhill, who is the lead vehicle designer, said this, Every Halo vehicle enthusiast has it. A story where someone pulled up in a Warhog, beeped the horn, they got in, and they spent the whole match playing together. Even if you got destroyed on spawn, you'd find each other to go find another round with another vehicle. Some of my best college buddies were made this way on land. Vehicles are the only inherently cooperative part of the sandbox, so they carry the responsibility of forming these connections. I think single player vehicles are important for encounter design, but multiplayer vehicles are necessary for Halo's community. In this whole section talking about vehicles, they, like I said, they put a lot of emphasis on cooperation, teamwork, rather than saying like, you jump in a vehicle, you feel super powerful and invincible, which is kind of like the latter is what Halo 5 did, but I'm really looking forward to bringing back this teamwork aspect. And since they put such a big emphasis on teamwork and vehicles, I think later in this video, you'll see why I think the vehicle that 
that they brought back in Halo Infinite is that vehicle. Now what kind of environments will you be using these vehicles in and how have they been tuned for the environments that will be in Zeta Halo? Well, they go in a little bit deeper on this. And I did mention this in a previous video, but I feel like it's worth saying again since so this is our vehicle specific video. Saying, vehicles allow players to navigate the play space differently than on foot. Going over an area in rocky crags and fallen trees, Warhog, with its high ride height and large tires, will eat it right up. Going over a flat marsh covered in pockets of water, the anti-grav of the ghost will let you smoothly boost through it. Stuck in a canyon, trying to get to a base, the Banshee makes it a quick up and over. This gives you some insight kind of what terrains will experience in Zeta Halo that there will be a nice variation. From what we've seen so far, it seems kind of samey with like woodlands with like these tall pillars all over the place. But it sounds like you'll have to traverse like mountain ranges, marshy swamps. Uh, you also have to, of course, the woodland forest. Also in previous Halos, we've had snowy areas on these Halo installations, so I could totally see that happening as well. Though this does make me think that will you be able to like choose your vehicle before going over to like a certain area? We do know on the Halo Infinite gameplay reveal that there are specific bases that we do have right there. Are those locations we can kind of load up for different equipment and vehicles? take them to the next encounter location? Or is it more just kind of like, it's all out there, kind of scattered around, you just kind of use what you have at the moment kind of thing? I'm sure not a question they can answer right now, as this is a very high level update, but as we get more information, I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel as we get more details. Now, an interesting design philosophy here, it sounds like what they started out with is actually going to the environmental teams to kind of create some awesome areas, and then they designed vehicles around that. They didn't hear specifically saying, to meet the fantasy of more expansive Halo, we really needed to unlock our environment artists and level designers to make much more complex terrain. Early on, I made the promise to these teams that if they made awesome looking environments, we'd make the vehicles able to traverse them. We have dev builds of all the older Halos going back to CE, and this terrain is order of magnitude or magnitudes more difficult. While this caused a significant retuning of the core vehicles that have been in every Halo, when you get to see these gorgeous environments for Infinite, I think it'll be worth it. I think this is an interesting philosophy to go about putting together vehicles is starting with the play space and then creating the items for the player to utilize around that play space. So it's kind of like a chicken and the egg kind of thing of like which came first. Ultimately, I think that this might be the best way to go about doing it because one thing we want Halo Infinite to be an immersive, open, expansive, beautiful environments to jump into. Yet we also want it to be functional. So I probably would agree with the lead vehicle designer here saying that you want to start with the environments that you'll be playing around in and then develop the vehicles around that. And for what it sounds like that the environments to go through in Halo Infinite will be a bit more of a struggle than your previous Halo games. Maybe won't have such specifically designed lanes to go through in the game. It'll be kind of more open and kind of up to the player how they want to traverse the levels. Giving a much more natural feel to the entire environment environment rather than feeling like it's a gameplay specific play area. Oftentimes when you're playing games you come across an encounter area you're like oh a battle's about to happen here the way this level's all laid out. Uh, one game that definitely comes to mind for me specifically would be like Mass Effect or Gears of War series or whenever you come across an area with like a bunch of like waist high boxes and things like that around you're like okay we're about to get into an encounter here. I think Halo if it's trying to avoid those kind of situations and create much more natural environments which Halo's always have done a really good job of in the franchise but I'm glad to see that they're going with this kind of method of gameplay and environmental design. And lastly about the philosophy on vehicles, they do go over the interactions of players on foot compared to players in vehicles and essentially you know there are differences with like limited ammo counts on foot with unlimited ammo with vehicles. You want to kind of make it so then vehicles are not crazy overpowered while you know people on foot can put in some damage and you know counteract these vehicles while the vehicle themselves also feeling powerful enough to where you can make a difference within the gameplay. And it's a very tough balance to make, but I do mention the golden triangle here of guns, grenade, melee, so I think they're kind of be sticking with the tried and true formula for Halo when it comes to combat. And they also do mention here that after the game releases, we will be getting new content added in as in new weapons, new equipment, and new vehicles. So whatever gets put out at launch is not going to be the final product when it comes to the sandbox for Halo Infinite. And we go into some new vehicles right here. One new vehicle is specifically mentioned in here. Now they don't say the vehicle itself, but they mention the mechanics of it and the style of this vehicle, stating, 
We are working on a new vehicle that is looking pretty hot. This new vehicle will sit nicely between the Warhog and the Scorpion in terms of power level, so it should ignite some new discussions on what vehicle to take to a mission. We just got our final concept, which really lit a fire under the team to get into flighting, so stay tuned. An interesting choice of words to describe a vehicle. They put a big emphasis on hot, ignite, and really lit a fire. Now, I've been reading a lot of dev updates from Halo over the years and they don't really describe vehicles in this way so I think this kind of is a hint to saying this might be like a flame based vehicle within Halo Infinite. Now you're talking about Warhogs and flame there actually is a flamethrower Warhog that was in Halo Wars 2 which Obviously, Halo Infinite is grabbing a lot of influence from Halo Wars as they're bringing over the Banished and many other kind of vehicles and stuff like that from that game. And in Halo Wars 2, there is literally a flaming warthog that uses a flamethrower for its turret, which is just kind of crazy and insane. It's kind of designed as like a close range warthog, which is something totally different we've never experienced before. It'll just be very interesting to see how they implement the damage of this vehicle, because oftentimes I find flame weaponry to be kind of delayed and not really worth using. But if they really make the flames super lethal, then this could be an awesome addition to the sandbox. And this other vehicle reference has me very excited about what's going to be coming in the Halo Infinite. Gwen Del Hoyo, the lead of the sandbox team, mentions this specifically saying, One of my favorite sandbox items is a vehicle that we haven't shown yet, but I'm sure I won't be alone with my favoritism once we do reveal it to the community. This vehicle isn't totally brand new, but has received a fresh coat of paint while awaiting its triumphant return to Halo. So this sounds like a fan favorite vehicle that hasn't been in a Halo game for a long time that a lot of people really want to see. Now to me, there's like two main vehicles that come to mind when it comes to fan favorite vehicles that have been out of the franchise for a long time. One is the Elephant from Halo 3. I personally love that vehicle. I'd love to see it come back in some capacity or whatnot. Uh, but the one I'm really thinking is going to be is possibly the Falcon from Halo Reach. I know a lot of people, including myself, really love the Falcon. It's probably one of my favorite vehicles, if not my favorite vehicle that's only ever been in Halo Reach. There were concepts of it being put into Halo 4, but then it just being cut content. And these two video audio recordings showcased on Halo's Instagram page showed a helicopter doing very similar maneuvers that you can pull off in a Falcon with this bladed propulsion system that you know, helicopters utilize. In that same exact video, they showcased a jet propelled jet fighter being launching off and also starting up. Now, what vehicle has propellers and jets? Well, there are a few, yes, but I think of the Falcon when it comes to seeing these two items recorded in the same video. And with Halo Infinite's huge influence of Halo Reach being put into the game, as well as being a team-based vehicle, which they put a big emphasis on in this development update, and the fact that the Falcon is just freaking awesome, I would be super surprised if it's not the Falcon that Quinn DeHolio has mentioned in this development update. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think it's a Flame Warhog? Do you think the Falcon is coming back in Halo Infinite? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you missed any content from me recently, check out a video is on the screen right here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.